Shalom. Peace. All praise and glory to the mighty Most High, our Creator, who is one God. One. There is none to the left, none to the right, and we ain't doing any kind of two-step tonight. Alright? There's none that are sitting on top of the right hand of the Creator. The Spirit. Okay? There's none. Uh, I said the other day that I was at Genesis chapter 5. I was off. I was gen Yesterday's video was Genesis chapter 6. So we're, or excuse me, Exodus chapter 6. So we're at 7 here today. And this is kind of an exciting lesson. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be pointing out a few things that are questionable here. Probably a few reasons why there's atheists. Understand that people that don't get the Bible, it's simply because the scales have been uh, placed on their eyes from the Creator. And what a job He does at it. Alright? So we're going to jump into Exodus chapter 7. Uh, then the Lord said, See, I have made you like God. The Lord said to Moses that He has made Moses like God. But... The Creator, the self-existing Eternal One, says what? That there are no other gods. So who is this that's telling Moses that he's making him like a god? Didn't also Satan say in the garden that you will be like gods? And also, didn't Jesus say that is it not written in your law that I have said that you're gods? Now you got something here that's saying that I have made you like a god to Pharaoh. Okay? And your brother, Aaron, will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you. And your brother, Aaron, is to tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites out of the country. Okay? Who's the Pharaoh? Folks. I believe at this point in time we've come into Ramesses. We're going to find out. Like I said... It's been a long time since I've read all the Bible, but I truly am. I'm going to push my way through this, Ron. So the Pharaoh, he is, considers himself a god, himself. But any time that underneath of the, the yoke of the Israelites, other nations prosper. Alright? Take an Israelite and put it in that nation, that nation prospers. Take the Israelites from the nation... The nation doesn't prosper. To let the Israelites out of the country. But I will harden the Pharaoh's heart. And though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt. He will listen. He will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt. And with might. Mighty acts of judgment. I will bring out my divisions. My people. The Israelites. And the Israelites are what for the Creator? They're His battle axe. Okay? When this shift rolls through this, um, if you're not on the right train, folks, then it's not really looking good for you. You got to get on the right train and figure out what's going on here. Okay? And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. Moses and Aaron did all the Lord commanded them. Moses was 80 years old and his brother Aaron 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When the Pharaoh says to for you to perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before the Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. Now, you know, of all the things in the world the power of the Creator could use, why throw down a, a staff that turns into a snake? Why not throw that staff down and that thing just turned into a little itty bitty bird that just starts to grow and grow and grow. And then the next thing you know, you have this, this huge 
massive bird with a 35 foot wingspan, man, pecking at people. Ah! Ah! Yeah, why not something like that? Also, Moses carried a snake out into the desert. We're going to read about that a little bit too. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did all he commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of the Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Pharaoh then summoned wise men and sorcerers. Wise men. Like wise guys. Sorcerers. Sorcerers are what? Deviners. Um, seers. Seers. Sorcerers. Seers. Seers. Source seers. Okay? And the Egyptian magicians. Because what? We live in a magic realm. The magician is the guy that's created on the sixth day of creation. He's a magic man. Okay? And he also did the same thing by their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff and it became a snake. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their, their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard and he would not listen to them. Now this is where I wanted to get to that I wanted to ask a question for you to get your will spinning. The last chapter, the, the creator said that he's going to bring them out of bondage. That he's heard the cries of the Israelites and that he's going to save them. All right? Wouldn't have it been better for the creator just to show his power and uh, instead of hardening the Pharaoh's heart for him to soften the Pharaoh's heart? Why would the Lord, the Creator, the self-existing Eternal One say that He's heard the cries of Israelites and that He's sending Moses and Aaron as messengers to the Pharaoh to bring His people out of Egypt? If He's heard the cries, why is He hardening the heart? Wouldn't He soften the heart of Pharaoh the first time? I will make the Pharaoh's heart soft and he will release you and let you go and you will do these things? Just just throwing it out there, okay? They would not listen to him, just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding, and he refuses to let the children go. Well, why? Why? Because the Creator said that he's going to harden the Pharaoh's heart. So why is he doing this? Why is he hardening a heart, but yet he's trying to let his people go? Because, because he's showing his people the miracles that are taking place, man. These miracles are for you. If there's any truth to any of these stories, then I'm guessing that because the Gentile nations are already created in an image, and most of them already know what they are, that these these plagues and things that are taking place are performed for you, the children of Israel, so that you could see the Creator's power. Because clearly, those that are created in an image already know the Lord's power. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding and he refuses to let the children go. Go to the Pharaoh in the morning. When he goes out to the river, confront him on the bank of the Nile. And take into your hand the staff that was changed into a snake. Then say to them, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, Let my people go, so that they may worship me in the wilderness. But until now you have not listened. This is what the Lord says. By this you will know that I am the Lord, with the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water of the Nile, and it will change it into blood. Everything on this place, this plane of existence, is about the blood. In the same um, analogy that I said, why not turn the snake into this giant 
ravenous uh, raptor, why not uh, turn the blood, the rivers, and everything into acid? Why blood? Everything is about the blood on this plane of existence. It's blood. It's all about the blood. The fish in the Nile will die and the rivers will stink and the Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, take your staff and stretch it out your hand over the water of Egypt, over the streams and canals, over the ponds and over the reservoirs, and they will turn to blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt. Wow. Even in vessels of wood and stone, Moses and Aaron did all the Lord commanded. He raised his staff in the presence of the Pharaoh and all of his officials and struck the water of the Nile and the water was changed into blood. The fish in the Nile died and the river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt. But the Egyptian magicians did the same thing by their secret art and the Pharaoh's heart became hard. He would not listen to Moses and Aaron just as the Lord had said. Instead, he turned and went into the palace and did not take even this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile to get drinking water because they could not drink the water of the river. So there we go, folks. That's uh, chapter 7. Rolling ahead in Exodus. Gonna keep this one, I guess, short, man. I blew through that. I got through it faster than I thought I would. I thought I had a little bit more to cover here. Uh, the next, oh yeah, we're down here. Twin, the plagues of the frogs. Seven days pass since the Lord struck the Nile, and then He sends the plague of the frogs upon them. Remember, any time that we're talking about Pharaoh or uh, uh, Egypt, we are talking about slave. Masters. Okay. Egypt means the land of slavery. It's the land of bondage. Okay. Egypt is the land of bondage, okay? Just like Canaanite law, man, this is all what it is. It's Canaanite law. It's always been here. It was always created. The creator created it. He made all of it from one corner to, uh, to another. The only way to get away from the evil and the corruption is to get away from the cities, man, to get out of these cities because everybody in these cities are dead you understand if you are worshiping jesus christ crucified as your lord and savior if you've been baptized and you have been baptized in christ and did you not know that you were baptized into his death why does it always say death why does jesus hold the keys to death in hades if he's the creator then in duality exists, then we have to have a door of life as well as a door of death. But Jesus, it doesn't say that he holds the keys to life in Hades. It says that he holds the keys to death. That's holding the keys to death to let all you people in to hell. You're not getting out of hell. You've been taught that he holds the keys to let you to set you free from your sins. And the, there's, the, he's the mediator between you and God. And that ain't happening. He's coming with the sword. He holds the keys to death in Hades. Because he's grabbing you by the back of your hair. And he's swatting off the top of your head. And then he's going to toss your carcass and your head in the eternal hellfire. Not me saying it. This is the creator saying it. This is what the Bible's saying. You've got a way with a lot of vain 
nasty stuff. The government has done and destroyed a nation of people that are spiritual beings, okay? And we couldn't get it straight because we were not spiritual beings. We, When you're running in your sins and you're walking contrary to the Creator and you're not seeking Him and you're not asking anything of Him, uh, then you're never going to get it. It's, it's just that simple. So all praise and glory goes to the Creator, the Most High, the Spirit which moves all things in place. There is none like Him. Remember, folks, just because it says God in the Bible doesn't mean that it's talking about the Spirit. doesn't mean it's talking about the Creator. It's specifically talking about a creation that the Creator channels through and uses as His puppets. We are all to His glory. All of us are under His control, His power, and it's Him alone. All right? You're not who you think you are. You don't have free will. You don't have it, folks. Okay? This country that has pushed freedom down your throat means the freedom to fall away from God, thumb your nose off to Him, flip your fingers off to Him, to tell Him that we don't need Him, and continue to vote evil parasites in the office that have stuck your country from, and I'm talking in 50 years, $500 million was the deficit to our country 50 years ago. 50 years ago, listen to the number that I just said, $500 million was our country's deficit just 50 short years ago. How do you go from $500 million to $27 billion? You do that by corrupt officials. If you can't see that, that this system was designed for failure, then you are wearing blinders the size of Texas. Your eyes are obscure and you can't see the truth. All praise and glory to the mighty most high our creator who is one God. Blessings be to all the children that repent, turn from their sins the best you can. The creator never said that you have to walk this perfect straight line, man. He just said repent and turn to him. Do the best you can. Okay? Hit your knees in private. Okay? Call out in, in shame and sorrow and with a humble heart. Fall down and pray, folks. It's time to wake up from your delusion. I hope this helps you. I truly do with all my heart. I have a deep compassion today to save souls. My family's souls as well. But nobody wants to listen. Okay? I have learned the truth about this system. I know for a fact that Jesus Christ is 666. I have calculated that number many times in many videos. I hope that somebody hears this. More so a Christian than any, than any supporting Hebrew that already knows the truth. I want to turn people back that don't know the truth. That I get people in my column that say, Dude, I've never heard such, such madness in my life. But even as mad as it sounds, it all makes sense. You know that, dude. I'm going to fall from my faith of Christianity. I'm going to fall from my hope of Christianity in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to do just as you have told me. I'm going to turn to one God, the Creator, the self-existing eternal spirit of truth. Okay? There is none like Him. This is His show. And it's time for me to go. This is White Raptor News Ministries. Peace.